natural law thought was really the foundational, the moral foundational base upon which economics as a field of inquiry first developed. Um, and it's my view that if you're really to understand the subject correctly, you got to go back and, and view it that way. Um, because there's a moral underpinning and that moral underpinning is, is really what has been discovered through the ages. You know, you don't lie, you don't steal, you don't murder people, you don't covet their stuff. If you want something, you go produce something and you trade for it, like a good human being would do. And uh, you certainly don't vote it out of somebody else's pocketbook. There's only four ways for you to acquire the means to the achievement of your ends. You could produce it yourself. Now, for some things, that's a no-go. I mean, if I wanted a gallon of gas, I wouldn't know where to begin. I guess I could have gone down to the beach after the BP oil spill and maybe gotten some crude oil. I think I know you have to start with that somehow. But I wouldn't know what to do with it. So trying to produce it myself, the learning curve is too high. I never get there. Um, which brings us to really the only economic way. Produce something that's valued by others and use it to trade for what you want. That's a miracle. I mean, I, I do this one with my students. Um, we'll talk about, I'll ask them, who had, uh, who's had lunch? And I'll ask them what they had, and they say, well, I had a ham sandwich. I say, okay, let's say you wanted to produce that ham sandwich all by yourself, starting with nothing. How long would it take? Okay, well, let's see, I've got to have wheat to make flour, to bake bread. I said, do you know how to do all that? You know? First, you've got to go find the wheat, right? You've got to go somewhere and find some. Do you know how to grind it into meal, flour? Do you know how to, what ingredients go into the bread? You know, what else are you going to need there? <clears throat> Do you have an oven to bake that bread? <laughs> you know, so all these things. And pointing out that if you had to do all that by yourself, you probably wouldn't be eating a ham sandwich. Um, I said, however, you know, you can go down to the subway and for five dollars get a foot long uh, sandwich, ham sandwich. And um, now think about that and I'll ask them, have you ever had a job? Most of them will say yes. So how much did you earn? Well, many of them earn around ten dollars an hour. So, so within, a, within a half hour's worth of your labor, you're able to produce something and trade for a ham sandwich. And everyone who had their hand in it did it voluntarily. We didn't have to twist anybody's arm. No violence involved. It's all perfectly cooperative. I said, that's a miracle. Trade, production with trade is an absolute miracle. So there's only two other, two other ways you can get what you want. Somebody might give it to you. They could be charitable. They could give it to you. But that's their choice, right? It's voluntary sacrifice on their part if they decide to do that. But that presupposes they've already produced it. Or you could steal it. You could take it from somebody else by force or fraud. Those are the only options. See, socialism will never work because it's nothing but a form of systematic theft. It's legally stealing what your neighbor has to try to get, uh, achieve your own ends. That's why it will never work. It, you can only steal something once, and if you destroy the ability to produce, if you render the, the ability to produce useless, then you destroy the economy. And so to many of the problems that we face today politically, in terms of political economy, still fr uh, stem from our failure to adhere to natural law thought.